welcome back today's topic is determination of electrostatic potentials due to different charge configurations in this video lecture we will see how to determine the potentials due to line charges cylinder charges and spherical charges now first of all coming to the recap in the last video lecture we have seen how to determine electrostatic potentials due to point charges we have seen a single point charge we have also seen uh, multiple point charges which are leading to potential at uh, particular points we have calculated uh, absolute potential and also potential difference between two points in electrostatic fields now in this video lecture we will go through computation of electrostatic fields due to different charge distributions and by the completion of this lecture, I hope that you will be able to compute electric scalar potential or what I call it as electrostatic potential due to different charge configurations. So the first question in this video lecture is uh, determination of electric potential at any point along the axis of a uniformly charged disk. We have seen in the last classes the difference between a shell and a disk. A shell is just like a circular thing where the charge is available only on the surface. This is a shell where the charge is only on the surface. But whereas for a disk, the charge will be uniformly distributed. This is a disk where the charge is uniformly distributed. Now he wants to determine the electric potential at any point along the axis of a uniformly charged disk. Now assume that the disk is two dimensional one. So this is a disk, a circular disk. Let us suppose its radius is r. Okay. Now this is a circular disk and it is extended in xy plane. The axis of the disk will be like this. Okay. This is the axis. This is in z plane, whereas the disk is in xy plane. Okay, I'll draw here. See, this is the disk, and this is the axis of the z axis, and this is xy plane. So, this is a disk, frame. and this disk is in circular fashion. And the radius of this, this is the origin. Let us suppose this is the center point. So, the axis passes through the center point. Now he wants to determine the electric potential at any point. Let us suppose he wants to determine at P, which is at a distance of H, height H from the disk. Now I will assume that this is the radius of the disk. Okay. Now you are supposed to determine the potential P at this particular point P, which is at a distance of H. Now how to solve this type of problems now? First thing, now consider a disk in XY plane carrying a uniformly distributed charge of sigma coulombs per square meter, which means I am going to take care, uh, yeah. this is a disk and this is charge is uniformly distributed and the distribution is coulombs per meter square, sigma coulombs per meter square. This is charge distribution. Let P be a point along the axis of the disk. So this is the axis of disk. I will take point P on the z-axis. At least the potential and electric field ought to be determined. Let us try to sort out only with the electric field now. Let the radius of the disk be A. So he wants to take it as A. And the point is at a distance of H from. The distance is at H from the disk. That is Z is equal to. In the Z direction, it is Z. Now, see, this is your disk. Now this point, this point is shortest distance is H, now this is H. Now since a disk is uniformly charged, now I will assume that the disk is composed of different uh, rings, elemental rings. I will consider different elemental rings. So I will take a small elemental ring which is mentioned as a dotted line and I will expand this ring from this point to this point throughout the radius of the disk. So when I am considering this elemental disk. I will assume that, see, consider a small elemental ring which is at a distance of r. 
So I'll consider it this which is at a distance of r. The maximum value of r is maximum value of r is a, which is nothing but radius of the disk. So I'll assume that elemental disk is at radius of r, and the thickness is dr, which means it is just like this. So I'm considering only a small uh, ring like this. Yeah, this region I'm considering. Okay. The thickness of this one is dr, whereas from this point it is r, and the thickness is dr. Okay. Now, what is the area of this particular disk? If I assume that it is a circular fashion, what I can take it roughly, I will take it as the circumference of the ring into the thickness. So, I will take it as 2 pi r into dr. This is the annual area of the disk approximately, not truly really, approximately, 2 pi r into dr. The circumference into thickness. Now, let the angle made by this one is equal to theta. That the angle made by this point at this is theta. Now this theta can be extended from this point to up to maximum. Let us suppose this is the maximum angle. The angle is alpha. Okay. So now after doing this problem, I will try to integrate it from theta 0 to alpha. What? The angle theta. So for your, uh, see, this is elemental ring. What is the angle which it is making? It is uh, angle of theta. Maximum value of theta is this is the maximum value, I will take it as alpha, which is created by the maximum radius. Now, if I consider this small as a right angle triangle, if you carefully see, this the shortest distance is the h. Now, let us suppose the distance which is formed by this one is s, and this value is r, isn't it? So, that is why I have taken as s is equal to square root of h square plus r square. See, the triangle is like this. The point is at a distance of h, this is point p, this is o, and this is a point on elemental area which I am considering. So, this is h, this is radius for uh, elemental ring, and this is s. Yes. So, this is the relation between these two, and uh, I can take that tan theta is equal to r by h. So, out of all these things, which is the standard value for me? The standard value for me is only h. I have to eliminate s and r and theta value I can integrate it from 0 to alpha, right. So I should convert everything into h and theta. So now tan theta is equal to r by h. So I can take it as r is equal to h tan theta, dr is equal to h into secant squared d theta. Now let the charge in the elemental disk in this disk is dq. Okay, so if the charge in the elemental disk is dq, now this is dq, right? So what is dq? You know, surface charge density into area of the elemental disk. So what is surface charge density? Sigma into area. This is the charge. Now you know that the potential which is developed by this elemental charge, you know the equation. This is the equation which we have tried. So if this Elemental charge is developing dv, then I will write it as sigma 2 pi r dr by 4 pi epsilon. Right? What is this d? d is nothing but distance between the charge and the point of concentration. So, this is my charge, this is my point of concentration. What is the distance? It is yes. So, I have to take it as yes. Right? And yes, I know the value of s. What is the value of s? Square root of r square plus. So, this is my expression. Okay. Now, this is my expression. So, in that expression, if you carefully see, this r also I do not want. I can use r as h tan theta. I have already done this one earlier, right? In the earlier slide. So, I will replace this one. So, what I will be getting? I will be getting the final expression as this one. So, this is the value of dv. In this one, what I can integrate? I can integrate theta from 0 to alpha, right? So, that is why I will remove these remaining quantities lambda h 2 epsilon. So, I will integrate it from 0 to alpha tan theta secant theta. What I will get? I will get secant theta. So, 
the value is sigma h 2 epsilon secant alpha minus 1. This is the voltage due to a disk at a point h and making a maximum angle of alpha. And the area charge density is sigma. This is the expression for the voltage. Now, moving on to the second question. Now. Determine the potential due to an infinitely uniform charge line. This we have done already. For uniform, infinitely uniform charge line, we know the electric field. We have done so many times. What is the formula? Lambda by 2 pi epsilon r. This is electric field. Now we will compute potential for this uniformly charged line. Now, say this is a charged line, uniformly charged line. I am considering a point P. So, what is the electric field at this point? You know it. It is lambda by 2 pi epsilon A. So, at this point, what it is? Lambda by 2 pi epsilon B. Isn't it? This is the field which you are supposed to consider at these points P1 and P2. So, what I will do now? Uh, now, VBA, if I want to determine the voltage, minus integral of A to B, whatever the path which you are choosing, E dot dr. What is E? We have already determined E. This is E and this is dr. dr varies from A to B. Right? So, this is R. 1 by r, if I integrate it, I will get log r. So, substituting between a and b, this is my expression. This is a voltage due to a line charge between b to a. What is a voltage drop? This is the expression due to a line charge. Now, if I take a uh, Coaxial cylinders. Determine the potential and field between two coaxial cylinders, each having line charge density of lambda coulomb per meter. Which means that there are two cylinders, and there is another cylinder. Now, each is having a center point. Now, this is the axis of these cylinders, and each one is having inner one is having lambda coulomb per meter, and outer one is also having. Default rate we have in minus lambda coulomb per meter. Okay. Now, what is the electric field at a point between these two cylinders? And what is the field between these two cylinders? That we will see. So, when you consider this type of thing, so this is the inner cylinder, this is a top view, this is an inner cylinder with a radius of A, outer cylinder is with a radius of B. So, the charge density defaultly it will be plus lambda, this is minus lambda. Now, this particular thing will be having five different zones. Inner zone R is less than A. Here R is equal to A. Here R is lying between A and B. At this point, R is equal to B. And far, B is greater than R. So, five regions region 1, region 2, region 3, region 4, and region 5. By Gauss law, we have already tried it. The field inside this one will be 0 because this is a square cylinder. It is not a uniformly distributed one. So, by Gauss law, internally it will be 0. And also, on this point, what will be the field? Lambda by 2 pi epsilon. If I assume that it is an infinite one. Right? Between these two also, the field will be the same. Right? Why? Because... But whereas if I consider this particular region, I am supposed to add both the fields, right? So, what I will be getting? I will be getting 0. And if I go with this region also, two charges I am supposed to add. For both, I will be getting 0. So, I will be getting field only on the surface of this one and also between these two. And the field is given by this equation. Right? Now, to determine the field for this one. See. Uh, yeah, I think this is what we have done. How to determine the field? Uh, I think I have directly taken this equation. If you don't understand this equation, 
you know what is the charge which is enclosed by this cylinder the charge enclosed is uh, lambda into what is the height of the cylinder right what is the height of cylinder it will be h by epsilon this is equal to by cos law e dot ds what is the surface area of this one it is 2 pi rh right so e into 2 pi rh this is the surface area of a cylinder into lambda into h this is a charge of the cylinder by epsilon so h h will go so e is equal to lambda by 2 pi r epsilon that is what actually i have written here so this is what i have derived here now for only regions between r is equal to a and uh, for only this region and also for this region i'll get a field because if i go beyond this the summation of these two fields will be zero so here this will be zero there is no electric field here here also there is no electric field electric field will be only between these two now if i want to determine the potential now v is equal to you know this expression so this is again pending here so i'll remove these two i'm supposed to vary from a to b right i want to the difference between these two cylinders so from a to b i'm supposed to vary so what i'll get 1 by r integral is log a log a minus log b this is the expression okay now the third question is about uh, two spherical shells now he has not given charge density he has directly given charges which means that there is a sphere which is having a charge of plus q and there is a sphere which is having a charge of minus q now what is the potential due to these charges now this is a charge sphere inner sphere is having plus q outer sphere is having minus q you know that the field due to this if i want potential between these two i must consider only electric field of this one right because if i count electric field of this one it will become q minus q it will become zero so inside there won't be an electric field outside also there won't be an electric field electric field will be only in this dotted region okay so what is electric field due to charge it is q by 4 pi epsilon r square now what is v minus e dot dl in this case it is dr so minus integral q by 4 pi epsilon r square into dr what i will get this is constant i will remove it 1 by r square what is the integral it is 1 minus 1 by r right so what i will get q by 4 pi epsilon r from r is equal to a to b so this is what i will be getting see q by 4 pi epsilon r from r is equal to a to b see first time i will substitute b second time i will substitute a so this is the expression so these are simple questions now i hope that now you are able to compute electrostatic potentials due to different charge configurations and for you the homework is uh, this is a homework this is an electric field which has been given it is a vector quantity now you are supposed to determine the potential at any point using these references thank you